let me show you some tips and tricks that will help you improve the battery life on Motorola Edge 60 Pro. And first we're gonna go to settings and open the battery settings because most of the things that can help us improve the battery life, slow down the aging process and fix battery draining issues, uh, these options are here that can help us. So first and foremost, we have the battery saver. I'm pretty sure everyone at this point know what battery saver is. However, um, I guess it is worth reminding that it is recommended to use battery saver when you are about to uh, completely drain the battery and you need extra minutes or maybe even an hour. So this option allows you to limit the performance of the phone and optimize the system in order to save the battery. Of course, uh, if you want to, you can also use the maximum battery saver, which will help you even more. And while using the maximum battery saver, we can also turn off 5G and choose essential apps because we can only use limited amount of apps over here. And besides that, we have schedule and reminders, so you can make the uh, battery saver to be enabled and disabled automatically based on the selected percentage in case so, um, when we're talking about enabling it. But if you want to turn off automatically, then we can only turn off at 90%. So definitely worth setting up. Besides that, we have the um, not battery usage, but the charge boost, which is the fast charging option. And there are theories um, that say that fast charging can ruin the battery quicker, that it can speed up the process of aging, which I'm not sure if that's the case, really. Um, I'm not here to judge you if you actually use fast charging or not. Um, but if you actually believe that fast charging um, speeds up the process of aging the battery, then of course we can turn off the fast charging option. Over here we can just turn it off and not use it. Besides that, we have the optimized charging, which can be quite useful, but only if you have a pattern when you charge the phone. Meaning that if you always charge your phone, let's say at, I don't know, like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., if you start charging at that time, then this is the great option that allows you to optimize the battery. Because with this option, the battery, while charging, it will stop at 80%. Uh, once the phone learns the pattern, it will stop at 80% at some point once it reaches 80%. And then when the pattern or when the phone knows based on the pattern that you are about to unplug the charger from the phone, then it will let the phone charge 200%. So 80% is pretty great because usually when we are talking about charging the phone, the most optimal way to charge it is to keep the battery between 20 and 80%, meaning that you start charging at 20% and you stop at 80%. This is just the most optimal way of charging the phone. And if you are not really, well, how do I say it? If you don't have any pattern, pretty much, um, when we're talking about charging the phone, then you can just use the overcharge protection, which is just a hard limit that uh, caps the battery charging to 80%. If you charge your phone, it will stop at 80% and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, while it can be inconvenient, it is pretty great to keep the battery for longer, to keep the battery in a healthy state for as long as possible. So you can consider turning this option on. However, if you prefer to use um, the battery um, as much as possible, let's call it that way, meaning that if you prefer to actually charge it to 100%, then of course you don't really have to use it, but I just wanted to mention this uh, option. There is also adaptive battery option, which is, there is really, literally, I think, no reason to turn this option off. Uh, so, uh, for the sake of optimizing the battery and improving the battery life, of course, it is recommended to turn this option on and keep it on all the time. Uh, by the way, if you want to check the battery health of your phone, then you can go to the battery info, and over here we can check the battery health status, which is indicated in the percentage. Of course, after some time, even if you stick strictly to those tips that I'm mentioning in this video, after some time the battery health will start dropping. This is natural, this is how batteries work, and there is pretty much nothing you can do about it. But of course, you can slow down the process, so there's not like there is it's not like there is nothing at all, but you cannot do anything in order to fully prevent battery aging. Alright, so these are the battery settings that I think are most important ones, I think in terms of battery optimization. However, there are some additional things that we can do which are not strictly related to the battery, but more um, to the functionality of the phone. And the first thing that I want to show you is actually in location over here. If you go to location services, what you can do is you can disable Wi-Fi scanning and Bluetooth scanning. They can really drain the battery quite a bit. 
especially since they are enabled all the time. So you want to turn them off and only turn them on if they are really required to be used, which is pretty much, uh, well, I would say there are only several occasions during the whole usage of the phone where you might need to use Wi-Fi scanning or Bluetooth scanning. Nevertheless, uh, when I'm pretty sure that if there are any apps that are required to use these or something, then you will be informed about it. So you will be redirected probably to location services in order to turn it on. So just turn it on only if needed. When you don't need it, just keep it off all the time. And another thing that is quite important and impactful on the battery um, is or actually are, there are several settings in the display section. So over here, what you can use uh, the adaptive brightness, which allows the phone to automatically adjust the brightness based on the environment, well, the lighting of the environment. And dark theme, if you actually use dark theme, you will use a little bit less of the battery. If you don't like the, the dark theme, then you can always create a schedule so that it will be enabled automatically only in specific hours. For example, when you are not really using your phone that much and it, you won't be bothered by uh, the dark theme. Besides that, besides these two options, uh, there is also, for example, the screen timeout, which is, um, well, usually people, I think, still use like 15 or 30 seconds of the screen timeout. That's great. But if you are one of the people that use more than that, then it is actually required, well, not required, but recommended to switch to one of these two first options. And this will definitely help you keep the battery full longer because if you keep the screen on, then of course uh, it will use more battery uh, due to that. There's also the attentive uh, display option which allows you to keep the screen on all the time if you are just looking at it, which I know it can be quite convenient to use, but it also has an impact on the battery, so you might want to turn this option off. And um, besides that, there is also the display refresh rate, which obviously if you use 120 hertz, then you use more battery. If you use 60 hertz, then you use less battery. I know that um, it is better to it. It provides better experience if you use actually 120 hertz. That's obvious. Uh, I'm just showing you the options pretty much. So I'm not forcing you, of course, in order to use any of these options. If you prefer to use 120 hertz all the time, then just do it. If you prefer to save the battery um, and optimize it as much as possible, then definitely you can switch to 60 Hz over here. And I think, oh, there is one more thing uh, in home and lock screen settings. Over here, if you go to lock screen, we have sleep display, which is always on display, which can be enabled or disabled over here. So definitely, if you use always on display, you can turn it off in order to also save the battery because, well, it's a function that uh, drains the battery quite a bit. Also, in addition to that, if you have some sort of animated wallpapers or something, they can also drain the battery quite a bit, so keep that in mind. But I think that's about it. I think I've mentioned everything that I wanted to mention in this video, and definitely these tips, while you don't have to use all of them at once, uh, even if you use some of them, they can be quite useful in um, in improving the battery life. So I hope this video was helpful. If I forgot to mention something uh, that you think was worth mentioning, then please share it in the comments, leave a like and subscribe.